Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the personal space that sailors get. In terms of personal space, like space that is all your own, really all you get is a coffin rack, so-called because enclosed on uh, five of the six sides, it's like you're in a coffin. Uh, but that space is private, it is all to your own. It's not like on submarines where you have to hot rack. That is exclusively yours. Uh, and you even get a set of curtains like this one that you can use to close yourself in so that you've got almost complete privacy. Other than that, your storage consists of a locker. Uh, so this is the style of locker that the ship had from World War II through the Vietnam War. Uh, very, very common, extremely common on ships of this era, especially for the U.S. Navy, uh, that, that you have a locker this size. Each sailor gets their own locker, and that's all the personal space you've got. Uh, on older ships at this time period, you have a much smaller rack uh, that does not have curtains or, or enclosures on multiple sides. It's much more communal living. So, this locker has a, a towel rack, it's got some ventilation, it's got some places for you to stack your uniforms. Uh, pretty much all you have are the things you're issued, uniforms, toiletries, things like that. Maybe, maybe a book you checked out from the library. You're not gonna have personal effects, personal clothes, things like that. You just don't have the space for it. These are locked up, you do get to store stuff in there, but there are frequent inspections where you've gotta open it up and show what's in there, make sure that it is clean, sanitary, things like that, because your health and wellness affects the rest of the crew around you because it's such communal living. You leave a uh, wet washcloth in here, it's not well ventilated, it's just balled up in the back, it starts to mold, that spreads to the other lockers around you. And then everybody in the compartment is breathing this in. So you do not have much personal space as the takeaway here, but that changes a little bit for the better when we switch to an all-volunteer military. After the Vietnam War, they had to give more privileges to sailors in order to entice them. Uh, how, do you, how, how does the Navy compete with Air Force bases? So this is the time period when you see significant air conditioning being added to ships, closed circuit television systems being added to ships, and additional space for storing your personal effects, and even being allowed to bring personal effects onto the ship. So the lockers of the 1980s uh, that New Jersey is outfitted with are actually a little bit smaller. So here you can see a couple of lockers. You've got a rack to hang some of your clothes. And you are allowed to bring civilian clothes on board now, as opposed to earlier time periods. So most of the lockers on the ship when you visit New Jersey today are going to look like these. However, it seems like the crew managed to salvage some of the older World War II era lockers that were being disposed of, and so we still find those in places around the ship, such as the one we just filmed at. Um, now, the lockers are actually smaller. How do sailors get more personal space? The racks themselves will open up so that you've got uh, a significant amount of storage room underneath, including a drawer where you can keep your personal effects. Now, interestingly, all of the Iowas don't have the same model of coffin racks. I'm not sure where exactly the change occurs, but on New Jersey, you've got a pool drawer here, and you've got a uh, metal plate that folds down over it, and then your lock goes right here to keep people from being able to pull out your drawer or, or uh, open up your bed and get into your personal effects. And your EEBD, your emergency escape breathing device, ends up just being attached wherever they can fit it. So here's a series over here, just like jammed in and, and attached aftermarket. On more modern ships, those EEBDs are already built into the rack. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's more or less where the drawer is now. So they're not stored somewhere else. You lose a little bit of your personal space, but by removing those from all these random places, you gain more shelf space and, and space for lockers around the ship elsewhere. Uh, so another interesting difference between the Iowas. So, uh, as you can see, when you open one of these up, you end up with significantly more personal storage space than you otherwise would have had in World War II. It's worth pointing out that even though uh, the uniforms are all in the locker under the mattress here, oftentimes 
especially uh, the dress uniforms, sailors would put under their mattresses, even though it wasn't locked up, and they would lay it out under the mattresses so that they could press it with their body to help get the wrinkles out. It's part of why the inspections happened. We mentioned earlier it was, it was for sanitary reasons. It's also to make sure there's not stolen stuff around um, or other contraband, alcohol, drugs, like things you stolen from other people. Uh, so your name and serial number are stenciled in just about all of your belongings. So what do you think? Is this similar to the amount of space you had when you were in the military, when you went to summer camp, when you were with the Boy Scouts, anything like that? Uh, let us know in the comment section down below. I did a summer camp when I was uh, probably in the sixth grade at uh, Historic Ships in Baltimore. I got to stay on Taney, and she was decommissioned in 1986. She had very similar racks to this, so th this uh, was more or less the storage space I had on there for the week I was on board. And I probably ended up packing more stuff than uh, this sailor seems to have. But let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum and our channel. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us. Thanks for watching.